Most stories of the Zulu kingdom often tell of the rise and the fall of Shaga Zulu, but they very rarely speak of the princess that was responsible for his birth, his survival, his ascension to the throne, and his death. Her name was Mkabai Gachama. She was one of the most powerful women in history. Mkabai and her twin sister were meant to be killed at birth because twins brought a lot of superstition. There was a superstition around twins that they brought misfortune. But their father, King Jamagandaba, saved them both. But although he spared their lives, he couldn't really spare them from the public superstition. So the queen at the time passed on and the twins were obviously blamed for this misfortune because they were supposedly the bringers of all bad luck. And without a queen, King Jama kind of lost it. You know, he became kind of lifeless and a bit erratic and he ran the risk of being dethroned. But Mkabai, not prepared to let that happen, took it upon herself to find him a wife and her name was Mtania. Soon after they got married, they had a child and they named him Senzangakona. There was now this new heir to the throne. Fast forward a couple years later, Jama dies, you know, and his son was still really young. Senzangakona was way too young to rule. So Mkabai took to the throne and ruled until that he until the day that he would become of age. So while powerful women weren't really a thing at the time, female regents were, and she proved to be a very um, accomplished protector. So at the time, her half brother, you know, obviously they were more comfortable with him ruling, but oral history tells us that she was the one that was actually in charge. You know, he was kind of a ruler by title. She called the shots. She was very well respected as the protector. She protected their throne by all means necessary. So fast forward a few years later, Senzang Akona comes of age and it's time for him to take the throne and she peacefully gave the throne to him, but she always stayed involved. So then King Senzang Akona gets an unmarried girl pregnant. When this happened, a lot of people saw scandal but Mkabai saw a possible heir to the throne. So she saved this girl, urged her to flee to save her life and the life of her child. And this girl gave birth to a boy and she raised him far from danger. Her name was Nandi and the boy's name was Shaga. Ooh, so dramatic. So then 20 years later, Senzang Akuna dies and Mkabai kind of puts all of her energy into making sure that Shaga becomes king. King Shaga was a legendary, just a raging success, uniting tribes. He listened to a lot of advice, but he hardly ever took it. And Kabai mostly stayed out of his way, you know. She was oftentimes just tending to her military. That's what she was really good at. She was a militant woman. 12 years later, Shaga's mother dies, Queen Nandi dies, and Shaga was devastated. He just completely broke down, becoming completely irrational and erratic, banning people from planting crops for a full year, um, making people spill milk instead of using it, like people weren't allowed to use the milk that they would harvest. And he would even have people executed for not crying enough. So then it wasn't very surprising that then there was a conspiracy to have him killed. Um, the thing that was very surprising was the person that was behind the conspiracy to have him killed. So he was killed by his half brothers and his attendant. And those strings were pulled by Mkabai herself. The crazy thing about it is that, you know, she then went on to have them killed for killing him. You know, she had them killed for treason. All that were involved in the conspiracy to kill him, except for her nephew, Dingane, who she wanted on the throne. And she was successful, you know. So after she successfully had Shaga killed and all of his murderers killed, she then got put her nephew on the throne. But oral history tells that he wasn't a very good leader. When Dingane died, Mkabai fell from grace. She lived to old age and she was alone. 
If it weren't for Mkabai Gachama, we wouldn't have the incredible story of Shaga Zulu that brought the Zulu kingdom its glory, making it one of the most powerful kingdoms in African history. <laughs> get enough education on our own historical figures in our Eurocentric education system and she was one of the biggest influences of the Zulu nation. She's somebody that really left a major footprint in the history of her people. We're going to be covering more Zulu, not Zulu, we'll be covering more African princesses, queens and important figures, especially important female figures in our African history. So if there's somebody that it is that you would like us to cover, please do comment below and let us know and we'll do our best to get that information in here for you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care of yourself. Lots of love. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.